If he can get you offended, if he can get you off track, if he can get you focused on the problem, if he can get you anywhere, just get your thinking changed, you're going to miss the kingdom of God. Men, how many times have you been accused by your wife that you can't find anything? That's true, technically not true. We can find things if we know where we're looking. They move them. They tell us that they're in the wrong place. They do, don't they? But is it not, it's just like something like the other day, I was looking for some, some aluminum foil, some tin foil. I said, hey, is there any tin foil? They said, yeah, it's right in there. It's right in there on this you know, counter. And I went in there, but I was distracted because there was a piece of tin foil laying there. I said, well, I don't want a piece. And I looked at the piece and I said, well, that's not big enough. And so I went back in there and I said, was messing around. And so they said, would you find it? I said, no, it ain't there. Ain't nothing there. And you know, it, literally it was pretty sad. It was about maybe 12 inches from that piece. But see, that piece distracted me. I said foil. My mind said foil. I was going for foil. There was foil. I saw foil. And I just happened to, you know, just tunneled vision. I just happened to just not see 12 inches away. It was the whole box. But I counted it as a, you know, it was a, it was a distraction. It was just a distraction. That's what the devil wants to do to you. He wants to distract you. He wants you to get you off. He wants you to get you looking over here. He wants you just to get a thought in your mind, get a, a zip just in your head, an arrow. The Bible talks about flaming arrows and flaming darts coming just to hit you, to get you offended, to get you off. Because then when you get off, you're off. You're going to miss the tree of life that's going to give you blessings and going to give you victory. It's going to give you joy. It's going to give you peace. You miss it. You're not eating the tree of life. You're not at the tree of life. Man, you're over here at the tree of offense. You're over here ripping off things. You're over here going into past stuff. And the devil's just saying, man, I got them. Chasing their tail now. Woo! And he just leaves you alone. Some of you say, well, you know, Pastor, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. This deal about the devil business. He, he hadn't shown up at my house. I mean, he's not. Yeah, it's because you're already doing his will. I mean, you're already on the board when he goes, when the, when, the, when the devil has his meeting in the morning to see who needs to be tormented or attacked that day. You're already on the side of him. He just looks down the list and says, oh, you don't have to mess with them. I got them going good. There's this tree of life. Listen to me. And it was sitting there. And this, 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 the devil got him over there and he got him sidetracked and he got him to saying, to thinking that, oh, you're going to be great. You're going to be something good. And so if you, if you read the story in Genesis 3, 2 and 3 there, it talks about the tree of life. And God said, look, you've got to get them out of the garden now because if you don't get them out of the garden because they've already entered into sin, they're going to eat of the tree of life and they're going to live forever in that state. You see, folks, God does not want you in that state of mind. God doesn't want you in that place of being influenced by the enemy. God doesn't want you in the place of always looking at the problem. He doesn't want you in the place of always seeing the bad in everything. God doesn't want you in your marriage looking at the faults of each other. God doesn't want you in a place in life that he's got you convinced your kids will never make it. God wants you in a place where you now are eating. Your, your sins are washed away because you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your sins are washed away and he wants you to come and eat from the tree of life every single day. The tree of life. He wants you to, listen, he wants you to come pick off the leaf and eat it 
or the fruit of the tree of life and eat it so that that day your thoughts are thoughts of victory, thoughts of life, thoughts of glory, thoughts of hallelujah. You know, I enjoy. Amen. I enjoy. I enjoy riding my motorcycle, but everybody wants to come and tell me I'm going to die on the thing. You can't imagine. People just walk outside the street. I'll be safe. Don't get killed on the thing. Yeah. How many people get killed in a car every day? How many people just drop dead of a heart attack every day? How many things happen to people? Just whatever. I mean, it, you, you can look at, well, statistically saying, you know, I had a person tell me the other day, if I wrote it, I was going to get cancer. I said, well, I ain't going there. Did you know that, that most motorcycle riders that have wrecks, uh, they have socks on. So socks could be the leading cause. <laughs> Falls into the statistics. The truth of the matter is, most people that have a motorcycle wreck don't know what they're doing. They shouldn't have been on the thing to start out with. If you learn how to ride and you learn what you're doing, you cut all that stuff out. Hello. People just don't know what they're doing. Ignorance. Well, why don't we live in life the same way? Why don't we live in life randomly? Why don't we live in life in ignorance? Why don't we live in life knowing what God has for us and then living by His principles and His precepts and eating from the tree of life rather than listening to the enemy who gets us over to eating death and destruction? Hello? Hello? I don't know about y'all, but I want the tree of life. I want to eat good things. And I'm telling you what, God has good things for you. He wants good things in your life. In, in the book of Revelation, um, it's Revelation 22. He talks about at the end of the whole world, at the end of everything, and you're in heaven, that you're going to see, you're literally going to see the tree of life. And it says, the tree of life, the leaves of the tree of life brings healing to all the nations. The leaves. Didn't even say anything about the fruit. Just the leaves. Just the leaves. The tree of life brings healing, it brings restoration, it brings life, it brings joy, it brings fulfillment. But God has to plant that seed in your heart. He has to plant the seed in your heart. And when he plants the seed in your heart, it begins to produce. It can become a great tree, but it takes some work. You know, on on this on this trip, uh, we were up in, you know, Colorado and and I love aspen trees. I just think they're beautiful. I love the way that aspen trees move and the way that they look and all that kind of stuff. And and I got to thinking about aspen trees and I went in there and, and started researching about aspen trees and and I, I, y'all may have known this. I didn't know this, that aspen trees, they do produce a seed, but an aspen tree grows, and actually the, the, uh, there's two huge aspen grows, one in Utah and then one in Aspen, Colorado, that uh, they're known as the largest living organisms because once a seed's planted, then the mother tree that's grown begins to put out roots and shoots, and they come up, and it actually doesn't, all the trees don't come from seeds, they come from... The roots. And that you can go into these huge, huge aspen groves, and if you could, you know, they can, but I'm sorry, we can't. But, you know, you go in there and you could take the, like the DNA of the, you'd find that they'd all come in from one tree. And it makes a huge grove. And I was reading that, because I was just looking at aspen trees just to look at, just, just to learn something. And I started speaking to my heart. I said, well, wow, think about that. If we have the DNA of being born again and the Spirit of God's living on the inside of us and the seed of God is in us, then the, that's like the going back to the mother tree of Jesus coming up in us and what should be growing and producing in our life and making this tree of life in us should be go all the way back to being in Jesus. You with me? What's really interesting also about... Uh, aspen trees is the length of time that they live. A normal aspen tree will live 150 years. 
Okay? Aspen trees, I'm just giving you a little data here. They, they do very well in shade. Uh, it's difficult for the seeds to grow in a stand because they have so many trees growing up from the roots. They don't, it, it, you know, they don't produce from a seed that often. Fire, listen, fire indirectly benefits aspen trees since it allows all the little saplings to flourish to, to open, to, gets it open to sunlight and when it burns the landscape. Isn't that interesting? When I was thinking about that, I said, isn't that funny? Because sometimes fire in our life should produce something good in us. It goes back to that same way. If you always got it easy and you're always complacent, you never have a problem, you never have a situation, you never have a little fire, you don't get all that underburst burned out, you don't get all that stuff out of your life, you don't get all the junk that's falling, you're stumbling around all the time. Sometimes a little bit of problems can be good for us. We don't want any problems. But if you never have a problem, you never have a test, then how can you have a testimony? Right? You'll say, well, Pastor, you lost me on that. But that's good. First you're talking about this, and now you're over here. I'm just saying. You're not going to ever get to the place in life you don't have any problems. But if we understand the principles of God, then when the problem comes... Rather than it destroying us, rather than getting our focus on it, rather than us getting us offended and off track, we grab hold of it and we walk in the power of God and the blessing of God. Amen? I don't know about y'all, but I want to be a tree of life. I want that DNA of Christ coming out of me. I want to be growing. I want to see a situation or a problem and say, okay, Lord, what are we going to do about this? You know, y'all can think it's crazy, but you know everybody's praying for rain. Everybody's praying for rain. Everybody's praying for rain. Everybody's praying for rain. I was standing in in a in a um, little restaurant, and there was a rancher there, and I was talking to him, and and there was a police officer, and we're we're visiting the three of us, and the police officer was from Corpus, and he started laughing. The rancher started laughing, and said, "Yeah," he said, it "Sure does make it hard to pray." We're praying for a hurricane. Y'all are in the way. (laughs) And the guy said, yeah, my wife, she's really concerned. She's real scared and she wants me to come home. And I stopped there and thought, wow, isn't this amazing? They're praying, Lord, don't let that hurricane tear my house up. And everybody else in the state said, oh, Lord, just come on right up through Corpus, Lord. Just bring that rain. That's where we got (laughs) to And I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could ever get in agreement? <laughs> How about some agreement? Do you realize that? Do you realize that? I mean, it's a natural thing. And, and it's like we want to say to them, look, I'm sorry. You'll have to sacrifice. <laughs> Do you have insurance? You can rebuild. It'll be okay. <laughs> 